Yeah. Yeah. So or, introductions. or introductions. Yeah, that works as well. So, hi, I'm Sudi. Um, I've been teaching panels for years. <laughs> I've been cosplaying, um, well, officially actually starting going to cons and cosplaying religiously since about 2009. My first cosplay was like back in, I don't want to give away my age, so <laughs> we'll just say when I was 13 was when I made my first fair cosplay, enough, fair enough. and we'll just say that was many years ago. <laughs> well, see that, and it's fair because I didn't even start in cosplay, I started in costuming, because yeah. I, I, I like to build I like to build um, Halloween costumes. Like I love to build like demons and, and, and vampires and stuff. And so I didn't actually cosplay until like oh five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like it's it's two different zones. It you know? is. And, and, it's, it, and you and there's a diff, it's different. It's a different kind of feel. Like like with cosplay, and I'm, and you know, feel free to have your own perspective on this. But it's one of those. I, I find cosplay is more of a, a fun maneuver. Like I'm just being good. It's just you know you're having fun in character, and you're just kind of enjoying being the character. Whereas costuming is a lot more involved because you're trying to like you're going for more details and more effect than characterization. Yes. Per se. Yeah. Very, very much so. Like um, I'm, prob I'm probably oversimplifying it, but <laughs> I started out um, as costuming, like you said. Yeah. Um, when I was young, I told my parents that for my 12th birthday, I wanted a sewing machine. <laughs> and that is how I started into my costuming world, was that um, I grew up in Cedar City. Okay. And it's very well known for its Shakespearean um, arts festival. Uh, which I still, which it's I fantastic. Unfortunately, I love it. It's fun. I'm gonna and go in here. We would, there's always some sort of Renaissance fair going on at the, during the summers. And that's what got me into costuming was that I would go with all my friends. My parents wouldn't let me because my mother was very strict. Strict. <laughs> I mean, she wouldn't even let me own my favorite movie, which was The Little Mermaid, because it had magic in it. But you know, wow. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there are there are parents like this. I've dealt with them at cons. <laughs> so I started going to these Renaissance fairs with my friends, and I loved it. And I loved the costumes, and yeah. that's what got me into sewing. And you know, asked for a sewing machine when I was twelve, and you know, a few bed sheets later. <laughs> that's literally so. what I ended up making my first Ren fair costume out of was nice. bed sheets. Good yes. Veggies are awesome. We, and it looked yep. it looked great actually. Nice. So I'll I'll go ahead and start because it's very very simple how I run this. Um, go for it. So first no, step. No, that's okay. I'll just use my computer. It's all good. Ooh, this is an older one. <laughs> Sorry, this is an older version of my slideshow. Um, so step one is choosing your outfit or character, right? Sometimes you don't get to choose, the character chooses you, right? Yes. You're watching something <laughs> and you're like, oh, I love this character, I have to be them. Yeah. Or I love that outfit they're wearing, oh my goodness, I have to make it. So your step one is choosing an outfit. So um, something to keep in mind if you're just looking for a costume to do for a convention or for a party or for Halloween or something is trying to choose a costume that doesn't have very many accessories, embroidery, or props. This will cut back on your budget a lot if you stick to something very simple and what? just do the character. What qualifies as accessories? Accessories can be almost anything. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, it can be jewelry. It can be an extra coat or cape. Sometimes um, a character is still recognizable without that extra little bit. And so, I mean, it does make that little bit special if you have it, but if you're on a strict budget, you know, sometimes you're just like, you have to know where to cut it, you know, where to stop. Um, not a must, but choosing a costume or character that is close to your own characteristics will lower your cost. So if um, the characters that you're deciding between, you're like, hey, these are my favorite shows, try to pick one that you're like, well, this one I'm more like. I don't have to buy contacts for, or um, hey, I can pull this one off with my own hair. That's going to be a big, big benefit because I will tell you 
that with some of my costumes, the most money I spend is on the wig. But I have some tips for you so that you don't have to spend too much. Number one thing that I like to remember is give yourself plenty of time. Oh my gosh. This is when you're <laughs> going to spend the most money is when um, you're in a rush and you have to find that one item and you have to settle and end up paying a lot more than what you want. Um, so if you give yourself plenty of time and start early, that's going to be your cheapest bet. I have never been more, I don't know, carefree and happy to be at a convention when I get my costumes done early. When I'm not under stress, I have the best time. When I'm under stress trying to get things done and end up spending a lot of money, all of a sudden my budget for that convention is very tiny. I'm stressed because of this costume. I'm trying to hold it together and it's not as fun, it's not as good of an experience. So it's better to give yourself more time. So sometimes, you know, that more time and quality on that costume is worth the multiple costumes. So don't be afraid um, to wear your costume more than one day if you're going to a multiple day con and you, you know, you're just like, I don't know if I can afford two costumes. Go ahead and try to settle on whatever one your heart is more towards and you'll have more fun, you'll love the costume more, and it's just a better overall experience. From the, from the budget aspect and everything, what about you know wearing the same costume for three days and a con for three days? You know, it's your first con or something, is there any issue with that? Um, it's not a problem. Yeah, no, it's not a problem. It's just a matter of making sure it's clean and make sure it's oh, yeah. durable. <laughs> because you want to make sure that your costume's durable because you don't want it to be fallen apart by the end of the convention, and then you can't wear it again. Right. And so... Um, yeah, but this happened with a friend, Sailor, Sailor Scout outfit, because the bow wasn't as secure as she would have liked it. Day three, it came right off. Oh, dear. So, Safety pins are your friend. They are, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> I can't tell you how many costumes I've had that are held together with safety pins. And you know what? It's okay. Yeah. Because I discovered that a safety pin was more secure than a clasp. So as you can see, today I'm actually wearing a belly dance costume because my troupe is performing later this afternoon at the Arts Festival. And I have honestly made a belly dance costume that it was held on together with <laughs> safety pins. And you know what? Nobody knew the difference. And we have a rule in my troupe that it doesn't matter how finished your costume is, you will wear safety pins because you can <laughs> always rely on them. They're yeah. cheap, no one sees them, and, you know, they're pretty safe. They keep you safely covered. <laughs> yes, indeed. So after picking your costume, the number one thing I like to do is study my character and then make a list. So here I have an example. I have a picture of a costume that I was putting together, and I made a list of everything that I was going to need. Now my list may be a little bit more extensive, but this is what I could fit on my little slide. So this is what you get for right now. And so I try to list every little detail of everything I'm going to need. That way I'm not rushing at the last minute going, oh my gosh, I totally forgot the bracelet. What am I going to do? And end up spending more money than I intended on this bracelet. So here's an example of Sakura from Tsubasa, um, the Jade Spirit dress. And I think I, oh wait, I don't have, and there is how this turned out. Very well, in fact, Ali. Why make a list? So I, uh, I started explaining why, and I had a slide for it. <laughs> Finding sales on materials needed. Now, the reason why I say materials and not just fabric is because I mean everything you're going to need for your costume. So, I love sales, and I love buying my materials or fabrics early for a costume. Like I mentioned in our little chit-chat before starting the panel, um, I started working on um, Zelda from the new uh, Hyrule Warriors. And I've already started collecting my fabrics for it. And that's because that way later on I'm not going to be rushed. I can just go back to that little box that I have for fabrics in 
and then start working. Do you tend to buy fabric for fabric's sake, in other words, for sale, no matter what, even if you don't necessarily have a costume in mind? Sometimes. Okay. <laughs> Only sometimes. And that is because I love costuming so much, and I know I'm going to use it for something eventually. Um, let me see if I can... Oh, I won't be able to bring it up unless I have internet access. I was going to bring up a picture of a costume that I'm working on right now that I'm actually so close to being finished that I think it's going to be done tonight. For yeah, Kofu actually has a Wi-Fi yeah, server. Oh, okay. Oh, maybe like at the end I can show yeah. you guys if you're interested. Yeah. But oh. um, Walmart will, uh, in the smaller towns, not like the big city, in their fabric area, will have dollar a yard fabric. And um, I found this fabric that I really liked. And I really liked the sturdiness of it, the thickness of it. I liked the color. Did I have a character in mind? No, I did not. I didn't know a single character that could go with this color. But I loved it, and I had extra money at the time, so I bought the entire bolt. <laughs> the entire bolt of fabric. I've done this. <laughs> and mind you, this bolt was huge. It was 20 yards, so I have 20 yards of this fabric. I didn't know what I was going to use it for. I just loved it, thought it was gorgeous, if nothing else. I could use it for simple things, like if I needed to make a petticoat. No one's going to see the color of that. It's just poof underneath, right? Mm. So I had it in my sewing room, just storing, and I watched the most recent Once Upon a Time season, season three, and lo and behold, there's a gown that just appeared in that exact color. Yeah. And if you all know, ballroom gowns are, they take a lot of fabric. Fabric intensive, I think it's the yeah. term. <laughs> so I just pause it, and I'm like, <laughs> I have that. <laughs> and lo and behold, I am making a Once Upon a Time gown, which all it's missing right now are the final details, and it's done. I'm planning on wearing it um, next week for a fancy con. Nice. So. Um, yeah, sales. Sales are wonderful. Um, coupons. Gather up your coupons. You know what? You don't have to buy all your fabric or materials at once. Sometimes I'll just buy one item a week and gather it up so that I can use those coupons. Um, Is it more? Can it be more efficient to do it that way? It's uh, more it, it fudgety, fun? like it's more cost effective, economic. Yeah. Yeah, it, to gather one material at a time. You may want to like start on that costume right away or something like that, and want to buy everything at once, but you're going to end up spending more money. Just by buying one piece at a time, you're, you're going to spend less, and it's going to be a lot less damaging on your own personal budget. Yeah. You're going to have, over time. yeah, you're going to have more money for food and stuff like that. <laughs> Which is important. Yes. Which, yeah, I understand. My poor husband, he's like, yes, I I can eat ramen for another week. <laughs> <laughs> he's wonderful. <laughs> okay, online wig shops will generally have sales. I like to just check my all the different online shops once a week and you know, just wait until I see that wig that I'm waiting for to go on sale. Um, and don't forget cosmetics. If you have cosmetics or prosthetics, things like that, you can check out websites for that. I have other slides that can explain more on these topics later. Um, also providing plenty of time to order your supplies. So I know a lot of people aren't very crafty. And so, like I said, this is my all-purpose slideshow. And so a lot of people are like, I can't craft whatsoever. What do I do? I'm on a budget. So it also gives you time to order your supplies or if you choose to order a costume online. Um, sometimes uh, doing a local commission can be cheaper than ordering online through an online store. Can be. I can't guarantee their work or quality, but it can be. Um, I know that there is now a Facebook group page, of course Facebook, right? Yeah. That is, um, it's called Cosplay Commissions. And on there you can post a picture of your character and ask for quotes, and people will message you quotes on what they can do and their previous work. So you can check that out. 
I know a lot of people um, will take commissions off there so that they can build a portfolio. So they'll charge a lot cheaper than what would normally cost. So you can always check that out. Do you find that, um, you know, plenty of time to order your supplies, do you find if you use Amazon a lot, things like going with Prime when actually saving money in the years, would that help you do with Amazon? Uh, it can. I use Amazon for things as well. And I honestly use my sister's Prime account right. because this is usually when I'm like watching something. I'm like, hey, I know I need to order these shoes for this costume. And lo and behold, two weeks before the convention, I'm sitting there going, uh oh, I didn't order those shoes. <laughs> and I need to. So if you do use Amazon a lot, you know, for like other things that you might have in life, then yeah. It's good. I I trust the reviews that I see on Amazon. Sometimes when I'm looking for a review on product, I will actually log on to Amazon and check it out there before I've, buying it. I've been known to do that. We, I've also found that if you if you have if you can go through friends like if a friend has used a certain distributor and, and they have and they've used it, it's good to get kind of reviews from them as well. Yeah, that's true. Because sometimes on Amazon there'll be like two or three different people selling the item and you're not sure which one to go with. Yeah. And drives me nuts. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, let's see. Oh, also, if you're worried about ordering a costume and you, you know find a costume that is um, just what you need, right price and things, but you're like, oh, it's not the right size, um, dry cleaners have tailors. Also, now we're more networked as nerds. Like I said, I've been teaching this for years. Um, you can ask someone and be like, hey, would you be able to take this costume in for me? You can check, you know, online. You can uh, go to a, you know, a cosplay meetup picnic thing and ask if there's anyone there that'd be willing to do it. And there's a lot of people that'd be like, yeah, I'll, I'll take it in for you for ten bucks, because you know they're like, I'm gonna be crafting later that day anyways. I can do this, you know. And you know that's a lot cheaper than having to take it to a professional tailor, because that's way pricey. A little bit. <laughs> Okay, modifying clothing. So if you guys have seen Soul Eater, this is our lovely little group of um, death scythes. Um, and these costumes were all made by just simply modifying clothing that we found at the DI. And it was a lot of a lot of fun to costume together because everyone was like, oh my gosh, it's the adults from the, the <laughs> anime. Um, thrift stores can be your best friend at finding what you need. Uh, so, you know, shopping around at different thrift stores, trying to find what you need. Um, try not to settle, uh, because you can end up spending more money modifying um, a shirt or something like that than it would for actually just buying the item outright. So try to be careful, keep your budget in mind when you're thrift shopping. Saving old clothing. You never know what it might be good for. I've done this several times. I'll find something and I'm like, this is so out of style. No one's ever going to wear this again. It's from the 90s. Fold up that <laughs> pair of pants, put it in my bottom drawer, and lo and behold, later on, a friend of mine wanted to do um, King of Fighters cosplay group. And I'm just like, I have clothing from the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> Pull it out, and lo and behold, I had a costume out of um, just old clothes that I had stored up. It was kind of fun. And, um, oh, down here it said, if, if you can't sew, it's okay. There's ways to modify clothing without having to sew. You can cut and then use glue. I can't tell you how many times I've had to use glue. I sew. I make my own patterns, and I will still glue things together. It's okay. Um, on the thrift stores thing, too, yes. when you say save old clothing, I didn't know this, but savers will actually give you a 20% off coupon if you donate. I well, didn't know that. I didn't either. And so when we went into savers this reason, she's like, she had a coupon from the stuff she gave. So while you're right, save old clothing, there might be a good time to give some donations yeah. well to get a discount. That is, so, that is a good for idea. For me, I can use baby clothes and stuff because my daughters are older, but in other words... Yeah, you can trade in their clothing. And, and go get something. Yeah, go get something. That's awesome. Okay, the small stuff. So try painting on prints or designs or trims instead of having to go out and find that specific trim. 
Um, let's see, what did I do here? Oh, so I painted this out of just acrylic. This is Tsunade from Naruto. Um, let's see, I also did a holo from Spice and Wolf, and on her sash that she wears, there's a certain print on it. And um, I found that print in the right color and everything for $14 a yard for the fabric. I'm very thrifty. I'm not going to spend $14 a yard on anything. <laughs> so I decided to just buy that cotton fabric in the right color, and I used a Sharpie and drew the design on. And guess what? That sash ended up costing me $2.50, I think, nice. altogether, versus you know, $14.99 a yard, two yards. I spent that would have been 30 bucks. Horrible. <laughs> For those sort of patterns, do you use, say, acrylic or something, or do you use fabric paint? Is there? It depends on um, how much I'm planning to use the costume. Right. Like for this one, it was a one-time deal. I just threw it together because my friends and I were doing a Naruto panel at a convention, and this was years ago, and we thought it would be cute if we were the um, Hokage. And so we all costumed as the Hokages, the different ones, and ran the panel. And people loved it. They thought it was wonderful. Um, but I had only planned on using that costume two or three times, so I used acrylic um, because that's just what I had on hand, and it was simple. Uh, versus another costume that I have that has some uh, trim painted on it, um, I'm like, I love this character. I'm probably going to use this a lot. I'm going to keep this one in my closet. I'm going to... So I used fabric paint. Fabric paint is a little bit more expensive, but it will last longer. Um, accessories. My lovely little thing is hidden. OK, I think it says something about try making it yourself. Like my little tiara here for um, Neo Queen Serenity from Sailor Moon. I just simply made that out of craft foam and some uh, little crystals that I had at home. So I just put that together out of stuff I had at home. And same with the wings. The wings I just made out of some fabric and wire that I had at home. Honestly, it's um, this really thrifty aluminum sturdy wire that my husband uses for making chainmail. He makes the little links himself and then links them all together. I was like, can I have some of this? And <laughs> ended up making my little wings for it. And so I try to find stuff around the house that I can use. And I know sometimes I have to sit there and try to make sure I'm not having a hoarding problem. <laughs> In fact, I'm thinking about making a panel um, like <laughs> called Hoarders <laughs> Nerd Edition. <laughs> I, that will come along later on. Because um, I've got little jars, like little plastic jars, uh -huh. and they're full of like beads and, and stuff. Oh, cool! Like that. And I don't, I don't, I don't really have any use for them to be honest. But I'm thinking at some point I'm going to use these. So I, I think I have, like six of them. <laughs> you can like tie them all together and then put them on a steampunk costume. Yeah. That would be really cool. <laughs> it's just like I, I ended up with like a surplus. And I was just like, I'm going to put these little, little containers, and I might use them in a future day. And I was like, yeah. I don't know what to do with these. <laughs> I think the panel would be hoarders a balance between what, you, what, what to keep and what not to keep. And what's too far. <laughs> so, yeah. like, um, I recently, you know, discovered that my kitty cat wasn't using this little uh, box tent cat thing that she had, which is weird because she loves tents. And so I'm like, hey, we should just throw this out because she's not using it. And then I realized that in order for it to pop up and keep together, it has, um, yeah, it has a frame to it that's made out of spring steel. And I, you know, being the crafter that I am, I'm like, <laughs> spring steel, cut, 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 took all that <laughs> spring steel out and threw away, you know, the rest of it. So I actually recently put that into a corset, that spring steel. Oh, nice. Yeah. So I use a throwaway item. I think the item originally cost like five ninety nine, but I mean, if you find it on sale or something, or if you have one, or your friend's getting rid of one, all of a sudden now you have spring steel boning for whether it's for wings or corset or bracers. I've honestly used spring steel to uh, make fabric bracers 
because it holds it together a little better, gives it more shape. So, anyways, there's an idea for you. Yep. Okay. Oh, save larger pieces of scrap fabric. This mermaid costume right here, um, minus the corset, was made out of scrap fabric. It was but, amazing when yeah, I realized like everything that I had that. The, but the court, like the, but the middle section is all scrap fabric. Yeah. Oh, neat. So the bow, the skirt, and the shirt. And the shirt actually did come all the way down and tuck into the skirt. Um, that was made out of scrap fabric that I had in my scrap fabric bin. Um, I have one of those. <laughs> like we said about the hoarder thing. Uh, so you know that lovely, those bins that you can get for around Christmas time to put your Christmas wrapping paper in that are nice and flat and about this big? That's what I store my scrap fabric in because it slips right under the bed. <laughs> so I put it in there and it slides under the bed. Is it only like that deep? Yeah, it's only like that deep. And so you can just lay them out. Like they usually have little wheels on them. Yeah. So I should, so I should, I should get one of these because I, I buy ones I buy are like that deep, and but only because I I have a lot of I have a lot of books. Ah, yeah. And so so I buy them that like eight. I get buy them like like Office Depot and like eight a piece because they have flat walls. They don't have that weird divot on the sides. Um, so I can so I can get the books that lay flat and they stack flat. Stack flat books, yeah. So but no, let's totally get one of those rollaways for my scrap stuff. So. Yeah. And so um, I have a general rule with my scrap fabrics that I don't see things that are less than a foot by foot because then you just start piling. So I try to keep things that are bigger than a foot by foot because generally you can't make much out of a piece of fabric that's less than that, even if it's just a little accessory like a little bow. You know, you usually need a foot by foot to make a little bow. So, Did not know that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, wigs! Yay! Wig time! Yay! Okay. Try styling wigs yourself. This will help you save money. That way you can just buy a base or obtain a base and then style it. Um, so, now we're on styling. I styled all four of these wigs. And um, for... What, what character is the upper right one? Do you remember? These? Huh? Upper right, which one's the what character is it? I can't remember. Okay. I I, it was a commission. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it was a commission that I did. And it was for a video game, one that I had never heard of. So, yeah. Just but curious. what I used to style these two wigs, I used Elmer's glue because it dries clear. It's not real hair. And number one favorite thing I love about Elmer's glue it's water soluble. So you can style a wig like I did here and then run it under hot water and the glue comes out and you can restyle it for another wig. Yeah. Which is what I did here. Um, it, these two are the same wig. In fact, I need to update this page and add another picture because I have yet I have used this wig three times over for three different characters with very different hairstyles. And just so. just because of the Elmer's glue, it can can come out with water. Yeah, it just it comes off with water, and that's wow. it. You don't even have to use soap as long as you use some hot water, rub your fingers through it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it will. It's water soluble. It dissolves in water. Neat. And what's great is it dries clear. So you can use it like a gel and then hold some, have something hold it in place and then the next morning it'll be dry and it's stiff in whatever position you put it in. How about the white up there on that one? I mean, did you get the white, one? did you put the color in or did the wig come white? The wig came white okay. on this one. Yeah. The wig came white and I, I used pure Elmer's glue to do this. This was um, Archer from Fate Stay Night. Yeah, I do cross plays sometimes too. <laughs> I should figure it looks familiar. I can't think, couldn't place him. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, I think, now, yeah, Nibby actually took this picture for me. Now, when, when it comes to styling, like when you, when you've got it wet, like with the, well, with the glue in it, mm -hmm. and you wanted to hold the shape, you just want to. Because I've got a character I want to do, and and one side of his hair sits, goes up and then it folds and comes down again. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll do it in sections. Okay. So I will have something like bobby pins hold it in place going one direction 
and let that dry overnight. And then the next day, do the opposite direction and hold it in place with more clips. Okay. And then you leave the clips in overnight because it takes about five to eight hours, which is about the time we sleep, right? Well, or hope to. Depending on how close you are to the phone. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I, I'm just trying to figure out how to do his hair because it's it's got that weird waft going on. So. Yeah, and you can also try to like style it first with hairspray. Hairspray will only hold a wig for about an hour, and then it generally that falls explains, out. That explains what happened to my Sun wig. <laughs> so you could try to style it with hairspray first, and then paint some Elmer's glue over the top, and then it will dry and hold in place. But is there any issue with the Elmer's glue getting on the the heads at all, or anything on the styrofoam? You know, does it? Drip down or anything. Sometimes, yeah. It, I have my general styling wig head because I've done so many, and it just, you know, it looks like poo because of how many times I've stabbed it with sewing pins yeah. to hold a wig on or something like that, and then Elmer's glue dripping down or paint getting on it. Um, but as for what you said, like adhering it too, I've never had that problem. So just as long as you don't like put like a big glob on it, being like, here, hold this, <laughs> right? Okay, we went over use. Um, let's see, reuse wigs. I like to buy mid grade if I'm doing like a lot of styling to the wig. I'm like, why do I need it to be a really super high quality if it's going to be like all spikes, right? So it's not going to need to look like really luscious hair. Um, let's see, it's not on there. Ah, well, let me click back. There we go. So, okay, we're still on wigs for a second. Um, also for wigs, I will do um, trades. I love doing cosplay trades on different websites, at um, cosplay meetups, at uh, cosplay swap meets, things like that. I love to do trades. I will, uh, you know, trade all kinds of things for other things because I'm like, you know what, they're just crafters too and we all just want to continue, you know, with this lovely art. And so I have gotten a lot of wigs that way by trading other wigs or um, even selling stuff and then buy, using that money to buy the next wig. We just picked up our most recent wig at a cosplay meet at one of the art sales that they had in Murray Park. Um, there was a great deal for it. Awesome. So small characteristics like uh, color co color contacts, and I can't stress enough that safety first, guys. We want to make sure that you're being safe with your contacts. Um, I know I have tried this before, and I'll t tell you from experience. Do not layer your contacts. Oh. Ow. Whatever you do, it hurts and it does damage your eyes. Do not do this. I know some people that have suggested it. Don't. Please don't. Um, so here are some uh, websites and what they're called for some natural looking red. Because I know a lot of people have a really hard time finding natural looking red contact lenses. Um, circle lenses are wonderful. I love them. They are fun. Uh, they do do a really huge effect on your eyes. They're really fun to do. Um, I usually get all my circle lenses from Peaky Paradise. And the thing is with them is that it takes forever for them to get to you. It takes like 20 days or so for them to ship it to you. So if you're going to order through PinkyParadise.com, you need to make sure you order well in advance. But their color contacts are only $19 to $25. And those are prescription color contacts. Oh my. Okay, I can get through this. Uh, false teeth and prosthetics. I love vampfanes.com. They are the first ones to make the um, custom fangs that you can make that are fit to your mouth. Also, uh, buying after Halloween. I love going shopping the day after Halloween, not necessarily for the costumes themselves, but for the accessories, the prosthetics, um, special effect things, latex, stock up on that stuff. Shoes. 
Uh, thrift stores are a wonderful place to find a shoe base or shoes. Uh, modifying shoes that you already own. So on this boot right here, I just added a few things on a pair of shoes that I wore for work regularly. And since I knew, hey, I'm just going to do this for a photo shoot, I just you know, made little stuff to stick onto it. Yes. I, did, I tried doing that once. I, have, I had a pair of, uh, there's like industrial boots with the, with the big toes and everything, and they got trashed. But I thought, you know, that character doesn't really care what he wears. And so, yeah. I, so I just painted, I just used like acrylic paint, I just painted over them, and, and they were perfect. Cool. The thing is with acrylic paint on shoes is that it will chip off. So you can't really get away with wearing that all convention. Yeah, it was um, just for one day, so it worked out. <laughs> I'm trying to experiment with different kinds of paints that will stay on shoes and things like that. And um, one thing I have discovered so far, if you're, well, going for something pure glitter, um, there is a called a flexible, stretchable fabric glue. And it's wonderful because you can paint this fabric glue on anything that's going to move or be moving a lot or needs a lot of flex, like shoes, and adhere whatever you need to to it, and it will stay and be okay. So I have completely glitterified a pair of shoes that way. Because, you know, when you move your foot and, you know, it, your shoe is flexing. So you, when the acrylic dries, your foot is flexing and it will eventually crack and chip off. Okay, let's see what else do we have. Uh, make boot covers. So for this pair of boots right here, uh, this is just a regular shoe at the base, and I made a boot cover, and then I, I glued it on. So it looks like one solid shoe. What do you typically make boot cover on? Fabric? Yeah, this is just fabric, honestly. You can make it out of fabric, leather. Uh, you can use leather. Try to use leather. Um, yeah, I, I've always had problems with boot covers because I've always thought you had to sew them into the boot. No, you not necessarily. Like this one I just glued. On another pair, I just used hot glue so that I could rip it off later and still use that pair of shoes. Okay. Um, yeah, I just glued it on to where you can see on a shoe where your sole and the shoe meet. Right. So I just glued it right there. So you don't necessarily have to sew it. Well, that's, that, that was my hang-up. So. Yeah. Do, you, uh, do, do you find boot cover things online? for? Yeah, you yeah, can do that as well. Okay. Um, the boot covers you generally find online will have an elastic going underneath it that are supposed to go underneath your actual shoe to hold it on. Um, you could do that, but I have discovered they get trashed pretty quickly that way. So if you were to just cut the elastic off or tuck it under and then tack glue it onto your shoe, it, it just gives it a cleaner look and more durability. Armor! So here are some wonderful creative um, materials to use for armor, Wonderflex, foamy, foam, paper mache, leather, leather, material, uh, actual metal, Sintra, and Hepacura. So this armor here is made out of Sintra. Um, it's really thick. It's um, fairly easy to use. Um, it's not too expensive, but it's not necessarily super cheap either. But it's super durable. Very, very, very durable. Which is why it's being used for us, uh, for a mercenary. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, this costume has lasted, I think, six years. Whoa. Over, like, much, much use. I'm, I'm not talking just like, you know, three times a year. I'm talking more like sixteen times a year. Wow. So it's very durable. Um, but it's going to cost you less than 100 bucks to make it, you know. Um, foamy. So this is uh, Twilight Princess Zelda's uh, spolder made out of foamy. It's just layered foamy, painted together. What you can do for foamy so it doesn't have that foamy look after you paint it is cover it with some sort of glue. Uh, whether I love Elmer's glue, okay? <laughs> I stock up on it around school time when they sell the bottles for 50 cents. And I just buy like five bottles, and that lasts me like almost a year with five. Well, okay, maybe six or seven because <laughs> of how much crafting I do. So um, I will paint Elmer's glue onto foamy 
on to um, after I put it into whatever shade it in, and then it fills in all those little tiny tiny holes that foam has, and then I let that dry, and then I cover it with my paint, and you wouldn't ever know that it was made out of foam. <laughs> in fact, it gives it a little bit stiffer of a um, of a feel and look, so it looks more like real armor. And foamy, you know, you can buy those little sheets, really super cheap. So you can actually make some pretty decent armor for fairly cheap. What's the difference between foamy and foam? It's the same thing. Okay, uh, there's different kinds of foam, though. Oh. Now, the reason why I also put foam is I know people have been loving uh, Eva foam or Evia foam. They're those uh, puzzle piece mats that you walk on. Um, that you can buy at Harbor Freight for 10 bucks, I think, for for a four-pack about this big. I have made props out of that. I think I might have it in my next thing. Oh, it's not in there. But I made a pair of swords out of that foam before. It was fairly easy to cut and shape. So. The whole mercenary suit downstairs. Oh, cool. I'll have to check that out. I, I literally got here just in time for my panel. So. Um, try to be inventive with your props. So um, the balls on my Sailor Pluto and are actually Christmas ornaments. That's what I use. And it was great because this part was made out of foam. So I literally took the Christmas ornaments, shoved them in there, just stabbed them. <laughs> it was great. Uh, I was going to use as, as like, like magic spheres, too. Before oh, yeah. I, I love that. Um, like my uh, little gun bracer things for Black Widow, those are um, water, uh, water. Wa washable markers. Oh. Crayola markers. Whoa. That I gutted I and spray painted. I was literally sitting there one day with a Sharpie in my mouth going, what am I going to use <laughs> to make these bracers? As I'm trying to make my list. Remember how I told you I like to make my list? And then I was looking at my Sharpie going, something about this shape. Oh. <laughs> so I waited for back to school time and bought a couple of those. And I made that for like $3. Oh. Um, toys. I love using toys. Um, the cleaver is just a toy that I bought after um, Halloween. Um, I have done katanas, those toy katanas. They're like really cheap and looking, and they're usually like all black or gray. So I will buy those and repaint them and make them look really nice by just simply repainting them. I've, I've done I've done those broken swords before too, and it's not as efficient. <laughs> Someone's waiting on me in another panel, oh. so I have to leave a little. All right. We'll see you. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. It was good. Okay, so here are some lovely things that you can do with your cosplay that you have now made on a very low budget. You can go get photos done. Sometimes, even if your costume's not complete or not best quality, a photographer can do wonders by just changing the lighting a little bit or getting you from certain angles. If you know you're into showcasing your costumes that way. Um, go to cosplay gatherings. See, now you're not afraid to go to the cosplay barbecue and spill something on your costume because you're like, oh, well, I spent two dollars on it. <laughs> um, and venture around at a convention without being stressed about something getting broken. You don't have to worry too much about, oh no, your two hundred dollar costume just got ruined by getting glomped. So now it, you can have more fun. So, and like I said, I tried to run this so that I can get lots of questions at the end because I have so much little tips that I can give people that I just like to take questions. You and gave us lots of questions regarding Yeah. <laughs> with, the, with the bracers you did for Black Widow, since you're, being, since you're gutting a um, marker, mm -hmm. how do you close off the holes? I didn't. I left them open. Oh. So um, Crayola had these uh, black ones. They were like neon colors or something like that, but I noticed the uh, casing for it, the plastic, was black. So I bought those ones so that when if I ever held it forward for um, 
picture, you looked inside and it just looked black on the inside. And I just used spray paint. And what's really cool is that even after the spray paint would scuff and such, it just looked weathered because when it scuffed, it was black or gray underneath. Oh, that's, that's a neat trick. <laughs> yeah, and I thought that was really cool too. I was thinking about your, your toys and use anything too. I was shocked. I asked John downstairs on his armor. He has those little buttons along it. And yeah. We need to do this for Astrid that we're about to do. He used eyeballs. He used them, the googly eyes. Yeah. He just painted over the top of them. Perfect that is perfect, else. yeah. I'm like, that's great. I know for um, Sailor Jupiter, her little balls that go in her hair, you know, the, that lovely little 90s ball hair type thing, they don't make those anymore. And I didn't have any left over. And so I did ping pong balls. Oh, nice. I took ping pong balls and painted them. And since it's a ball and it's not going to, like, deflate and stab, um, bobby pins into it so that I just take them and go <laughs> so like yeah I love using toys and going to the dollar store I will go to the dollar store and just wander around with a specific shape in mind so I try to think of the shape rather than the item and that generally helps and so like for um, season two holo from spice and wolf she has a inklet and I'm just sitting there going, okay, I need an inklet. So I thought about the shape. I'm like, so basically flexible tubing. And so I wandered around the dollar store thinking flexible tubing, flexible tubing. As I walk in, there was a display of um, the glow-in-the-dark jewelry stuff, you know. And I realized, hey, that's flexible tubing. <laughs> <laughs> and so I just took that and painted it. Yeah. So. Okay. Thank you. Yay. I was